Chapter 1 Why Montenegro? Did you know that there is a place in the world where in only four hours you can go from skiing to swimming? A place where you can travel from one city to another in only 30 minutes? Yes, we are talking about Montenegro, a hidden treasure of Europe a place full of freedom, wild natural beauty, friendly people, and great food. Those who managed to visit the beauty of this country did not remain indifferent. Montenegro is a small country and region full of contrasts divided into three regions. The coastal region, central region, and mountain valley region. It means that at the same time you will find snow and ice on the north and relaxing warm climate of the south. You will find so many stones and shakes, but such a large number of green fields and plains. So much war, but then so much freedom. At the moment of the creation of our planet, the most beautiful merging of land and sea occurred at the Montenegrin seaside when the pearls of nature were sworn, an abundance of them was strewn all over this area. Lord Byron Where Eagle Meets the Mountain Montenegro is an independent country positioned in the central Mediterranean or southeastern Europe, bordering with Albania to the southeast, the Adriatic Sea to the south, and Italy across the sea. Croatia and Bosnia to the west, Serbia to the north and northeast, and Kosovo to the east. The territory of Montenegro occupies approximately 13,812 kilometers squared. At the same time, Montenegro is a Mediterranean country and a mountainous area. Due to this fact, the climate is colorful, diverse, and adaptable. During history, Greeks, Celts, and Romans lived on the territory of Montenegro. These cultures influenced Montenegrin tradition, but not as much as the arrival of Slavs. They settled on the territory of Doklia and constantly fought the Byzantine Empire. Before Prince Vladimir, near the end of the 10th century, there are few direct sources about Doklia and its rulers. Prince Pedar and Jovan Vladimir have established their own independent state. However, toward the end of the 9th century, they fell under Emperor Samuel and then under the Byzantine Empire. Prince Vojislav freed Zeta. From that time, the name Zeta started replacing old name Doklia and Prince Vojislav freed Zeta from Byzantine control in 1042 BCE, and his grandson Bodin assisted the growth of Zeta, which then controlled Raska, Bosnia, and Skadar. After Bodin's death, the state had another fall under the Byzantine Empire, and in 1185, it fell under the Serbian state of Raska. In the second half of the 14th century, Zeta gains independence from the central Serbian state, first under the rule of the Balsic dynasty and later Knojevic dynasty, and starts existing as an independent feudal state. Ivan Knojevic leaves the capital in Zabjak and moves to Setinje in 1482, where he builds the monastery in 1484 which becomes the center of Zeta Metropolis. Durad Kronchevik was the last ruler of medieval Zeta. He established a printing press in Setinje in 1493, in which Oktoy, the first voice, was printed. This was the first book printed in Cyrillic by the southern Slavs. After a very short Duryad's rule, Montenegro falls under Ottoman Empire in 1496. Montenegro fought for almost four centuries against the Turks. Montenegrin tribes were divided for a long time and were unable to give stronger resistance. 
In 1696, Danilo Petrovic was chosen to be Prince Bishop of Montenegro. He was the one who managed to make peace between the tribes. During the reign of Sava, Danilo's successor, tribal feuds surfaced again. His co-adjutor, Vasile, while on a sojourn in Russia, wrote a history of Montenegro. After Vasile's death, self-styled Skepan Mali succeeded. He presented himself as Emperor Peter III of Russia and imposed himself as ruler of Montenegro. But soon after, Petar I Petrovic Negos took spiritual and secular control of Montenegro and formed the first joint government of Montenegro and Boca and brought forward the first legal code called Stega. Petar I was succeeded by his nephew Petar II Petrovic Negos, who ruled from 1830 to 1851. He abolished the governor's system, introduced captain's courts, the senate, and the first secular school in Montenegro. He brought a printing press to Montenegro and made an impact on the cultural and economic growth of Montenegro. Petar II Petrovic Negos was the last prince bishop that held secular and spiritual authority. His successor, Danilo I Petrovic, separated secular and spiritual authority and made a new legal code. The biggest uprising in Montenegro happened during the reign of Prince Nikola I, Petrovic Negos, who ruled from 1860 to 1918. At the Congress of Berlin in 1878, Montenegro, which then spread from the Adriatic Sea to the River Tara, was recognized as fully independent and started recovering both culturally and economically. Prince Nikola adopted a constitution in 1905, and the National Assembly crowned him as king in 1910 and declared Montenegro a kingdom. During the First Balkan War, the territory of Montenegro was greatly expanded, and after the end of World War I, Montenegro was united with Serbia and came into the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes later known as Yugoslavia. In the year 1941, Montenegro was occupied by Nazi troops, and both German and Italian soldiers remained there. Almost 10% of the Montenegrin population died under the occupation of Axis powers, from nationalistic and fascistic formations from the inside of the country, and also revolutionary and ideological clashes during the Liberation War. Montenegro becomes one of the six People's Republics of Democratic Federative Yugoslavia under the strong leadership of Josep Broz Tito. The People's Republic of Montenegro changes their name in 1953 to the Socialist Republic of Montenegro parallel to the name change of the whole country. The Federative People's Republic of Yugoslavia to the Socialist Federative Republic of Yugoslavia. After President Tito's death, inability and unpreparedness of each republic's leadership to open the way to political reforms and to face the question of preservation or abandonment of Yugoslav Federation in a democratic way led to SFRY's breakdown, resulting in a bloody civil war at the beginning of the 90s. In 2006, Montenegro again becomes the independent Republic of Montenegro. At this time, Montenegro is negotiating about a session to the EU. The rich and dramatic history of Montenegro has led to the creation of a heroic and knightly codex which is still present today among the people. Montenegrin history is so full of wars, but yet so full of freedom and struggle for the same. Every place and every part of Montenegro has its own story. Culture and Tradition 
The first thing that anyone from Montenegro would answer to your question about culture and tradition of the country is ethics and bravery. Those two words perfectly summarize almost whole Montenegrin tradition. The history of Montenegro is filled with wars and fights, and Montenegrin people are well known for their strong freedom will, heroism, and deep ethical principles. The language and literature of Montenegro are a rich part of the country's culture. One of the oldest scripts, Miroslav Gospel, dates back from the first half of the 12th century. Being written for Prince Miroslav of Hum, it is decorated with around 300 colorful miniatures and initials, decorated with stylized flora and fauna, natural and fantastic, and various other ornaments. The Miroslav Gospel is done in a combination of different styles, but mainly Byzantine and Roman, and it is the most significant Cyrillic monument. The Chronicle of the Priest of Dukla, a work of an anonymous writer, was written in the second half of the 12th century. The Chronicle is a blend of narratives about rulers beginning with the arrival of the Slavs to the Balkans up to the circumstances when the Chronicle was composed. Also, this chronicle is enriched with a love novel devoted to Lord Vladimir and his significant other, Kosara, which, by its structure, is similar to the later chivalric novels. One of the most beautiful parts of the chronicle refers to the cross of St. Vladimir, which was kept for quite a long time by a family at the edges of Bar. This cross is a piece of a tradition performed by each of the three religions from Montenegro, Orthodox, Catholic, and Islam. They convey it once a year to the highest point of Mountain Rumina in Bar.